Hello everyone, and welcome to another informative Catabla video. Video games really have gone through a massive transition in the last 20 years. 20 years ago, the world was taken by storm in the face of the first 3D model games to be introduced. Hell, I remember Final Fantasy VII being all over the news about how realistic it looked. Since then, the progress has not slowed down. In fact, it has steamrolled its way to greater heights in a time frame I do not think most people thought was even possible. Today we have nearly photorealistic graphics, augmented reality, virtual reality, and the industry is growing by 10-20% to 20 every year fiscally, growing to nearly 140 billion in 2018. In light of this exponential growth, sources and funding have entered the market more than ever before, including funding for full dive technology. Yes, you should be excited, because my friends, we are not just in an era of technological advancement. This is a gaming revolution. Before we get right into full dive technology, we have to talk about how we got here. For the last 30 years, the sights of the gaming industry has been solely on creating photorealistic graphics. We went from 8-bit games, to 3D polygonal models, to using real humans in performance capture technology, to give lifelike movements. However, in the last few years, many experts agree that we are pretty much as advanced in graphics as we are going to get. We use motion graphics to develop facial expressions, movement, and use photorealistic textures for the environment. So when you get this far, what's next? Leading up to full dive virtual reality, we have to talk about the systems that most of us are accustomed to today. This would be the HMD system, or better known as the head mounted display. This system uses a combination of two small, high resolution LCD monitors in your headset that takes you into the world, and audio attachments that further immerse you. The trick to virtual reality is to trick as many senses as possible at the same time. In theory, a truly immersive experience would control your vision, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. However, three of these are currently out of our reach because they are directly dependent on interacting with your central nervous system and sensory neurons. To do this, we need to interact with the brain, which you guessed it, is the basis behind full dive technology. The next question that developers had was, if we cannot go to the virtual world, what can we do? And well, the temporary answer to that was to bring the virtual world to us through augmented reality. The most famous version of this model without a doubt has to be the ultra successful Pokemon Go. However, there have been other instances of this in the past. You may remember a small company by the name of Google, putting out their Google Glass which essentially put a computer right in your world like Tony Stark. There is a ton more that we could go over, such as virtual reality being used as early as the 1970s for flight simulations, military training, and automobile design. But honestly, we all know why you are here. You are here to talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have you given yourself over to divinity yet? Obviously I'm kidding. Chill. Since the introduction of the anime, Sword Art Online in 2011, the world exploded in talks about full dive technology. The ability to see, smell, hear, and experience a virtual environment to its full capacity. To escape your life and enter a world where you are not the guy who hates his job, or the kid who gets bullied at school. Hell no! In this world, you are a badass, sword wielding, monster slaying, mother trucker, with people from all over the world respecting your skills. If you have not been keeping up with all the research into this, you are in for a really nice surprise, my friend. In 2013, there was a major breakthrough in an experiment ran by Harvard University. They had successfully used the thought patterns of a person to directly control a robotic arm. This was the first time that a brain could communicate to a hardware interface. The biggest reason why this is important is because it proved that a human brain could be interpreted by a computer. If full dive was just going to be used for video games, I wouldn't be very hopeful of seeing it in my lifetime. However, luckily this is not the case. There are many applications available such as medical and education. For example, a surgeon being able to interact and interface with a robotic surgical equipment would be highly beneficial because it takes the human exhaustion factor out of the equation, as well as more precise procedures. In terms of education, the ability to study in a virtual world with lower costs of tuition eliminates the needs for an on-campus accommodation and overall creates a much easier experience. 
It is for this reason that world governments are funding the research into this. For example, the USA plans to spend $60 million over the next four years to develop a high-resolution, wide-bandwidth, intracranial electrode array for recording and stimulating brain activity. Now that's a lot of words, but essentially it means they're developing an experiment so that they can interact with the brain. While the main goal is to create virtual environments for all of these reasons, this is a great first step in understanding the interface and options. Now for the most exciting part that I'm sure a lot of people don't even know about. There is currently a game out there that can be played with your brain as a control. That game is called Awakening, and it is a startup company called Neurable. It works with an electroden laden headband that connects to the HTC Vive virtual reality headset. Electrodes place on the scalp to track brain activity. Software analyzes the signal and figures out what should happen in the game. However, as far as full dive gaming goes, we are not quite there yet. The advancement in the last 8 years have been absolutely astounding. Based on how many resources are being funded into this, I think it's entirely possible that we see this in our future. There are a lot of things that we still have to figure out, such as the ability to replicate sight in VR because the brain requires about a million electrodes just to put an image together. However, I will leave you with this. A hundred years ago when basic computers were being used, the idea of the internet, solid state hard drives, and the ability to hold a high powered computer in the palm of your hand wasn't even fathomable. Now we have that, and more. There is a lot of technology that we do not even have access to yet. Based on our current growth, it is nearly impossible to say where we are going to be 20 years from now. If you enjoyed this, let us know by having a discussion with us in the comments. And leave a like so we know what we are doing correctly. If you really like this, feel free to subscribe as we upload multiple videos a week. See you in the future. Toodles!